We give honor to Jesus Christ, who's the head of our life, to our staff of pastors, our minstrels, our singers, our elders, our ordained ministers, prophets, everyone in the sanctuary. It's good to be here. It's good to be here. It is our Savior's celebration of birth. So I said, well, he wasn't born on no December 25th. Well, we celebrate my birthday every year, and it's not the day either. But we gather to acknowledge and to celebrate that he is born. Somebody said, no, Bishop, he was born. No, he's still being born. Uh, and so we celebrate. We celebrate the Lord. Um, I want to move quickly because time has moved. We have enjoyed our righteous seed. We have enjoyed our music department. We're happy to have sharing with us Brother Kevin all the way from, uh, there he is, all the way from Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, he knows he's at home, and we thank God for him. Uh, Prophet Joshua Duncan from Sioux Falls, South Dakota is here with us today, and we honor the Lord for his presence. And for all of you, he'll greet us a little later. John chapter 1. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Verse 14. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross burned it. You paid from the cross to the grave from the grave to the sky lord i lift your name on high john chapter 1 verse 14 and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us full of grace and truth and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us parenthetically and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth i want to draw subject from the first few words and the word was made flesh we talk about the greatest gift Tell your neighbor the greatest gift. I'm closing. This is the season of giving. This is the season of giving. Uh, it is estimated that the total U.S. gift spending in 2020 is expected to reach $178 billion. One hundred seventy eight billion with a B dollars. Holiday shopping accounts for thirty percent of retail sales. Holiday retail sales are predicted to soar as high this year as nine hundred and sixty billion dollars. In 2021, it was 889 billion. When we look at holidays, Valentine's Day in 2020 brought in 27 billion. Easter brought in 21 billion. Mother's Day brought in 28 billion. Father's Day brought in 17 billion. 
July 4th even brought in six and a half billion. Labor Day brought in 34 billion. Halloween brought in eight billion dollars worth of candy. Thanksgiving brought in $5.1 billion in turkeys. Christmas, nine, well, in 2020, $777 billion. Yet the gifts we're giving generally are temporal in nature. We're giving gifts that end, fade, get too little, get too big wear out, and break. We spend more money than we do heart in these holidays. May I suggest today that in addition to all the money-based gifts that we've given this year and have gotten to give, that we give some heart gifts as well. Tell your neighbor, give me something from your heart. Give, give, me, give me something from your heart. I appreciate your pocket, but give me something from your heart. Give me an absolute acquittal. Give me beloved blessing, a charismatic cheer, a distinguished declaration, an endearing embrace. Give me formal forgiveness, genuine gratitude, a holy hug. Give me inspired encouragement. Just jubilation, kingdom kindness, literal love, meaningful mention, opulent opinion. Give me patient perseverance, quality quietness. Redemptive righteousness, sincere salute. Give me transparent time, unadulterated understanding. Give me vivid value and wonderful worship. Give me something from the heart. Yet the best gifts are incomparable to the gift that initiated the whole tradition. The word was made flesh. Come to the text as I cut around 285. The, the four gospel writers set forth Jesus from a particular viewpoint. Matthew uh, gives us the son of David the long-promised king of the Jews. Mark gives us the servant of Jehovah, bringing out the wonderful characteristic of his service. Luke gives us the son of man, setting forth the humanity of Jesus, the perfect man. John gives us the heavenly one who came down from heaven and dwelt among us, unveiling his divine glory. The text said, and the word, the word, logos, the word, the personal wisdom and power in union with God, the logos, his minister in creation and government of the universe, the cause of all the world's life, both physical and ethical. The word, the logos, which for the procurement of man's salvation put on human nature in the person of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. The Greek philosopher named Heraclitus first used the term logos around 600 B.C. I'm coming to designate the divine reason or plan which coordinates a changing universe. Mm. The Logos, the word, is the divine reason. I'm coming. The mental faculty of thinking, meditating, reasoning, and calculating. The Logos, the word, is God's mind. Mm. And God's mind, God's word, what he thinks, how he processes the very mind of God put on human nature. Let this mind 
be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The mind of God. Let it be born in you. Not to just take it on when convenient, but adopt this mind be brought in to this mind what is the mind it is the logos it is the word I'm concerned that the modern day church does not draw the inference and draw the connection that the word of God that was in the beginning was really the mind of God it was how God thinks in expression Mm, uh, let, let me go a little further. Uh, 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 the, the mental faculty uh, uh, for as the word, whether silent or expressed, is the birth of the mind. What comes out of your mouth is born out of your mind. It must first be conceived in the mind and then it is birthed out of the mouth. Hmm? So Christ is the only begotten of the Father, the express image of his person in all things equal to him and yet distinct from him. The word that comes out of your mouth is equal to the thought in your mind, but it's distinguished. It's equal to it, yet distinct from it the word the mind of God was made flesh here's my whole contemplation he did not stop being God the mind of God didn't stop being God or godly but now he was also a real Human being, the mind of God comes into humanity. The mind of God takes on humanity. May I submit to you that most of us get tripped up in our walk with Christ because we think we are humanity with a mind. When in reality, you're a mind in humanity. You're a Logos that has taken on flesh. For in the beginning was not Jesus. In the beginning was the mind of God. Don't make me go to Genesis. In the beginning is the mind of God. And the mind of God became flesh. Took on humanity. He wrapped his mind. In humanness, God's mind, I'm trying to, if you can get this, we're done. God's mind is who I am. This flesh is where I'm temporary dwelling. God's mind is who I am. He's the first begotten or the firstborn amongst many brethren. So the born again experience is not body first. It's mind first. The born again experience is not about feeling. It's about a revelation. Glory to God. The born again experience is not about a shout and a dance. It's about a mindset that has changed. We got a lot of shouting, a lot of dancing, a lot of running, a lot of hooping, and a lot of hollering, but this mind has not shifted. And so we're modeling something that has not happened. We're identifying with what we are not submitted to. Mind, mind, his mind took on flesh. He didn't stop being God. It is called the hypostatic union. Full God in full flesh. 
the challenge of the coexistence in one. Oh, that I could be godly here and another me would be the fleshly one. Then I can better control the other me. But in me is full godliness and full flesh. Paul picks it up and says, I find another law. My members that what I would to do good evil is present with me and that that I would do I do not and that that I would not do that I end up doing oh wretched man who shall deliver me from this body of flesh Romans 8 and 1 there is now there therefore no condemnation to those who are in who walk not after the flesh but after the I must choose the direction of my mind I must decide which one I'm going to listen to. It is not God's choice. God did the work. He showed up. He died. He rose. He ascended. He said, now the way is paved. You can jump on 75 and go all the way to Michigan, but it's up to you to get in the car and go. The mind must be born again. The mind is the processing unit of the heart. The heart is the place where our processing has made decisions. And so the heart governs the laws of the individual. The, the heart is where we set our laws, what we ain't going to do and what we ain't going to be and what you ain't going to do to me and what I ain't going to have. That's what we set in our heart. That's why once you set yourself to something, it's hard to change because that thing is rooted in your heart. But the root of the heart is fed by the contemplation of the mind. What I think about consistently gets settled in my heart as believable. So with the heart, man believeth. You missed it. You went to righteousness. With the heart, man believeth. You believe according to what's in your heart. What's in your heart is according to what you've allowed to stay on your mind. What you talking about? What you thinking about? What are you meditating on? Why are you always frustrated? Why are you always mad? Why everybody get on your nerves? Why are you so sensitive? Why are you... It can all be traced to what is on your mind. So the question becomes, do I have the word of God? Now, thy word have I hid. Thy logos. Logos, have I hid in my heart? Your mind, have I hid in my heart that I might not sin? That means my heart must believe the word. My heart must adopt your way of thinking. I'm almost there. It's time to go home. If I don't start thinking like God and continue to think generationally or co continue to think culturally or continue to think according to the times or, or according to the Gen X or whatever generation you identify with, if you don't get the mind of God, you cannot be God's. You can do God, but you can't be God's. Oh, uh, that's rough. Because I was laying last night and I was meditating well, this morning. And I said, well, Lord, I get it now. How on that day many will come and say, 
I've laid hands on the sick and healed them in your name. I've cast out devils in your name. He said, yeah, you could do my stuff, but I never knew you. You were never of me because I was never in your heart. My mind had never settled in your heart. So you did my stuff. You danced my dance. You wore my type of clothes. You did everything outwardly that I wanted you to do, but I never lived in your heart. Your heart was still wicked. Your heart was still deceitful. You never let me deal with your heart. You would even shut your mouth sometimes. But shutting your mouth does not cleanse your heart. It only prevents your heart from being known. Y'all don't want this Christmas message. It says, I want my mind in your heart. I want you to believe how I think. See, we, we, have, we have the praises of God down. We can get it. We got all of that. But when we leave the organ and the drums and the singers, Facebook and Instagram and TikTok reveals our heart. Because we have the mind of social media. You spend time with social media. You listen to them so you have their mind. You know how the world thinks. You know how the world feels. You know what the world is talking about. You know the top subject matter. And you're agreeing with what is not the mind of God because you're liking it. You're agreeing with what is not God's mind because you're liking it, but you say, I'm confused. How do you have the mind of God in your heart and agree with that? I'm, I'm, I'm confused. Because either sin is sin or it's acceptable by the church by virtue of who's doing the sinning. All right. All right, all right. When the girl marrying the girl is my girl, then shouldn't I like it by virtue of relationship? Jesus said, if you would not deny mother and father and lose these hope for my sake, you're not worthy of me. It's getting tight. We two faced it. That's old school. We two faced because. Because cause we like that over there, and then we come over here and dance for this. And God said, God said, what's on your mind? Because my mind is not on your mind. My way is not your way, and my thoughts are not your thoughts. It's a rebuke. He says, so if you're going to claim my name and beg for my favor... Take on my way. Because before you were called Christians, you were called people of the way. Come on, Zion. You were called people of the way because he said, I am the way. I'm going to holler in just a minute. I am the truth and I am the life. Ah, but we ain't ready for the way because the way is narrow. The way makes me adjust when I want, don't want to adjust. The way makes me shut up when I want to say what's on my mind. The way makes me not embrace who I love. The way keeps me from fellowshipping who's been there for me. Because just because you provided for me don't mean 
we're going in the same direction. That's why there's some people can't bless you because there are too many strings attached to it. It's going to get quieter in just a minute. That's why some people you can't receive help from because you know you're going to owe them in a minute. But we're denying the way for relational compatibility. We're denying the way because now we make $20,000 a year more and we've come into a different company of people and they do different sin. Because let me help you with something. The more money you make, the more sin is going to be revealed. Some of you have been too broke to really sin. You've been sinning that broke sin. Somebody said, I don't smoke crack. I snort cocaine. I don't do the broke sin. Some of you don't understand that the blessing you're on your way to is going to make you battle with something that you've never battled with before. That's why you got to be careful aspiring to high heights because compromise lines the way. Compromise lines the way. And if you get too high, you didn't compromise to get there. Uh, the Lord didn't take you that high. You got some friends that you got to come down for. You got some people that you got to come down for. You got some things in your life that you got to come. And when you see us, you run back up so you can maintain an image. But this image is not what we're looking for. We want his mind. God deliver the church from just an image and give us your power. Give us your mind. Give us your spirit. Give us an authentic encounter with you that changes our life. Forget this image. I'm going to the house. I'm going to the house. But I don't want no image. I'm tired of looking but failing to be. I'm tired of my sin, your sin, everybody's sin. I want the real thing. Throwing away everything fake. Get that fake junk out of my face. If it ain't the real thing, I don't want it. Even though the real thing is going to cost me something. I don't want to go to New York to get my Louis. <laughs> I want to go into the Louis store and go and pay the price for it. Uh, tell your neighbor what God wants to do in your life is going to cost you. And you got to be willing to pay the price. Um, you got to be willing to lay some things down. You got to be willing to turn that plate over. You got to be willing to get your face in the carpet um, and call on the name of Jesus. You, you got to be willing to give up some things and you got to be willing to deny some things and you got to be willing uh, if you're going to have what God has for you because God has more than a mansion uh, in store for you uh, God has more than a Maybach uh, in store for you uh, God has more than diamonds and pearls um, in store for you uh, but God uh, wants to deliver you um, God ain't no help in here wants to set your heart free God wants to heal your mind God wants to wipe your slate clean God wants to rescue your family God wants to heal your marriage God oh. I gotta go God said, I want to do more for you than prosper you in natural stuff. I want to do more for you than put money in your pocket. I want to do more for you than send you to Phipps Plaza to do your shopping in Linux. But I want to give you an expected end. I want to give you joy in sorrow. I want to give you hope for your tomorrow lean lean on your neighbor and say neighbor God has more in store for you God has more God 
says, I want to walk with you through the valley of the shadow of death. I want to stand with you when everybody's ready to stone you. I, I, I want to give you more. Say yes. Sit down, I'm almost there. God said, y'all caught up on big little stuff. You caught up on what appeals to the eye. But I want to give you something. That even if you're laying on your grandmama's mattress. Uh, that was passed through three generations. Uh, you can sleep like a baby. Because uh, there are people with millions of dollars. Uh, taking pills to go to sleep. Uh, and pills to wake up. Uh, but give me Jesus. Uh, Give me Jesus. I'd rather. Uh, yes. I'd rather uh, have Jesus uh, than silver and gold. Uh, I'd rather uh, hang in a church in here. Uh, have Jesus. Uh, give me Jesus. Let me walk you through here and I'm out. So my question question to the text was how was the word made flesh battle and I, and I had to ask the text and then I had to ask the text writer then I had to ask the governor of the text Help me understand how the word was made flesh. Let me tell you why I need to know. Because I got a lot of word over my life. But it ain't flesh yet. I feel like hollering, but I got to walk slow through here. I, I got a lot of promises from God, and I know that they're yea and they man in Christ, but I, I need them in my hand. I, I need them flesh. So I said, Lord, I, I, need to, I need to know the process so that when I leave church on Christmas Sunday, I can go and make some words flesh. I can go cook me up some word and put it on the table. Glory to God. Ah, so so he said he showed me, he showed me the process. Watch this. Uh, the first step, the first step, the first step is called prophetic declaration. Prophetic declaration is the word spoken into the earth realm by a prophet. Right, and, and so God says in Amos that I do nothing in the earth save I first reveal it to my prophets so God has people in the earth not to prophesy to you but to prophesy for you they are here to prophesy heaven into the earth realm y'all getting stuck on prophets who want to tell you your social security number I already know it who want to tell you your address I already know it can you speak something uh, out of the spirit uh, into the natural realm the assignment of the prophet the assignment of the prophet is not manifestation it's articulation it's not your job to make it come to pass it's just your job to say it but when you say it it comes out of the spiritual realm and steps into the natural because man governs the natural realm, not God. Are you listening to me? God does not govern the natural realm. I was asking God, I was looking at all these storms and stuff going on. I said, God, is this you? He said, no. I said, is this the devil? He said, no. I say, well, who is this? He said, I gave the earth to you. Everything the earth is doing now is a response to what you did then. So when storms rage, that ain't God. That ain't the devil. That's how man has handled the earth. I 
I said, God, we're reaping. He said, yeah, what you sowed. Every time you threw trash out the window, you didn't know you was creating an earthquake. It just didn't manifest when the trash hit the earth, but when it collected, you destroyed your own harvest time. Because there's more garbage in the earth than seed. And the earth can only produce. The commandment to the earth is produce what's put in you. So whatever we put in the earth is what it puts out. Not only the earth, but the earth. How you going to put out holiness and all you put in? How you listening to cussing seven days a week, eight hours a day, but you want to come in here and speak in tongues? Your mind still cussing. Oh, yeah. You think you ain't, uh, you think you don't have to pay for it because you didn't say it. But God knows the intentions of the mind. He knows what's on your mind and what's sitting in your heart. So even though you said, bless me, he heard you say, F me. He heard it, but I didn't say it. You said it in your mind. You said it in your heart. And God judges the heart. Man looketh on the outward. I figured the altar would be full by now. Because we're about the most cussingest generation in the church ever. And just because you're using the little stars don't mean we don't know what word you spell. Yeah, I said it. I got to go. My time is up. There's a prophetic declaration. It was Isaiah 9 and 6 that said unto us. Isaiah spoke him in. Isaiah said, come on. Come on into the realm. I know it's going to take you some time to manifest, but let me pull you in. God, somebody. I wish I had somebody in here right now that would open your mouth and start pulling some stuff in. Start declaring what you anticipate. Start saying what you heard God say. Stop shouting about it and speak it out of your mouth. Stop pulling out about it and shine. You shall have whatsoever you say. Isaiah, Isaiah spoke it. But then I had a problem with that because I said, Isaiah, he was here before you spoke him. So when did he really get here? He really got here in Genesis chapter 1, verse 3. And God said. And when God said, the word showed up because God was not talking to the heavens. He was talking to the earth. So when he said, and God said, the word showed up, the Logos showed up, the mind of God was revealed in the earth realm. And God said, let there be light. So he showed up in Genesis. He showed up in the earth. That's how he could be the tree of life. That's how he could be in the Garden of Eden, bearing fruit. And as they ate of him, they would never die. But there was another tree available. Anytime you shift from central focus to peripheral participation, you're going to mess up. The tree of life was in the center of the garden. The tree of knowledge of good and evil was on the side. So they had to leave the focus and be drawn away and enticed to something else. What central have you denied in your life? What used to be central that is no more? What happened to your prayer life? You remember how you used to wake up and worship? 
What happened to the songs that used to turn over in your heart? You got busy? No, you got pulled away to another tree. And you're dying. Because you've left the tree of life. And once you eat of that other tree, he got to put you out the garden. He didn't put them out because he was mad at them. He put them out of the garden because he didn't want them to live forever eating from the tree of life in the state of fallen sin. He says, so now you can't eat from this now. You've got to go through an experience for this now. You got to die for this now. And the word was made flesh. There was a prophetic declaration. Secondly, there's a supernatural consolidation. Uh, what is the consolidation? Uh, the angel comes now to Mary and makes an announcement. And the angel says to Mary, uh, it's time for you are very highly favored amongst women. You're, you are blessed and highly favored. Uh, uh, what's happening is the angel is announcing what's already present but not manifest. So the angel is bringing God. The prophet brings the thing. The angel brings the timing. It was an announcement to say what has been promised is now. I wish I could hear somebody uh, receive your announcements. The thing that has been promised uh, and that you've been waiting on for years and that you've been waiting on uh, all of 2022. Uh, I came as an angel of God, uh, as a messenger of God to declare to you uh, that you are blessed and highly favored uh, for the time for manifestation, uh, the time for performance um, is now. Somebody shout over time. I'm going prophetic declaration, supernatural consolidation. And then thirdly, there is a response articulation. Uh, after the angel says all this to Mary, Mary does not fall out and go to sleep. She does not start dancing. She does not take a lap around the church. Mary makes a statement, very conscious, very intentional. She says, be it unto me according to thy word. You have a word hanging out around you that cannot be born into you because you haven't received it yet. You don't receive a word with a praise. You celebrate a word with a praise. You receive a word by articulating it is so. You receive a word by saying, Lord, your will be done in my life. You receive a word by saying, even so, come Lord Jesus. You receive a word by saying, yes. This word. Prophet brought it into the realm. The angel announced the timing. The recipient, I'm gone. The recipient embraced it into her. When she said, yes, Lord, that word in the Holy Ghost was placed in her. Missed it. I have marinated prophet on this for years. How did the Holy Ghost put in her? The Bible says, and the Holy Ghost came upon her. When you think of getting pregnant, your mind instantaneously, yes, Lord goes to sexual organs. But the Holy Ghost is a spirit. It is of no sex. Has no sexual organs. So what did he put in her? He put in her the Logos. The Word. You're still missing it. He put in her 
the mind of God. When she said yes, she wasn't wet. When she said yes, I'm trying to wake you up. When she said yes, she wasn't breathing hard. When she said yes, her body didn't change, her mind changed. And as a man thinketh, She received God's mind and thereby produced his word. I ain't got much else. You'll never produce the word of God until you take on the mind of God. I'm going down y'all. I, I got carrots, honey glazed carrots on the stove, but I need to tell somebody it's time to change your mind. Uh, for the greatest gift that you could ever get uh, is the mind of God. Uh, it's time to take that Bible and crack it open uh, and say, Lord, give me your mind. Um, I want to think like you think. Um, I want to see like you see. Uh, I want to operate like you operate. Um, and when I Take on your mind. God bless you. I can have supernatural um, manifestation. Um, it's where the super uh, shows up in the natural. Uh, the seed um, planted in the earth um, breaks through the earth. Um, first as a stem. Um, it is the stem um, that is the conduit of nourishment. Um, from the root to the leaves. Um, it is the stem uh, that receives what the root um, has for it um, and gives life to the leaves. Uh, tell your neighbor, uh, your gift operation um, needs to be fed by the root. Um, stop being fed by secularism. Stop being fed by carnality uh, and get back to the roots. Um, you got dead leaves um, because you're taking your nourishment um, from everything but God. But there is a glory uh, in your belly. Uh, there is a treasure uh, in this earthen vessel uh, that is designed um, to nourish you uh, and to feed you uh, so that you... Uh, might bear forth fruit. Um, is there anybody in the room um, that said, I, I want the fruit of God. Um, I, I, I'm ready to bear fruit. Tired of being saved um, and not bearing saved fruit. Um, tired of acting holy uh, and not bearing holy fruit. Um, tired of running around the church um, but can't get no fruit in my life. Uh, I'm coming back coming back to my roots um, coming back to my prayer life um, coming back to consecration coming back to daily devotion um, I'm not waiting um, I'm not waiting on the praise team um, to lead me um, into the presence of God um, but every morning every morning um, that I wake up um, I say good morning Holy Spirit um, what a privilege um, and an honor to come before your presence. What a privilege and an honor to be called yours. Yeah, yeah. If I go any further, we'll be here too long. It says, the stem, the leaves, and then the fruit. We want to be fruitful, but we don't want to be rootful. Body of Christ, we got to go back to our roots. Oh, that's traditionalism. That's the old way. The new way don't seem to be working. Because we got form and no power. What amazes me, we still got sick people like they did in the 60s. 
but we don't have miracles like they had in the 60s. Where is the anointing of Catherine Coogan? Where is the anointing of old Roberts? Where, 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 where? Somebody tell me where A.A. Allen's anointing is. It's around your feet. It's lying in the ground. Mantles all over the earth. But in order to pull that sword out of the ground, you got to pay a price. You got to lay down your way. You got to deny yourself. You got to take up your cross. Follow him. Now take up your cross and follow him. Now take up your cross and follow him. Must Jesus bear his cross alone and all the world go free? Now take up your cross. Oh, no. His yoke is easy. And his burden is light. See, somebody told you your cross was heavy. No, his cross was heavy so yours could be light. You have no business being burdened by your cross. It's a privilege. carry your cross it's only heavy to the flesh but to the spirit it's an honor I say it looked heavy yeah it did but it's not and, and this is it and I'm going to the house some of you got a light cross, but in your mind is heavy. So because it's heavy in your mind, it becomes heavy to your body. We have some bereaved saints. Y'all prayed this thing. And, and we got some family members who's lost family. One of them lost the grandmother and sister in the same day. A few bereaved people that will take a light cross and make it heavy because it's supposed to be heavy. And we see other people carrying heavy stuff. And we deny our privilege by our birthright. So we make ours heavy too. But I came to announce to the saints, stop acting. It's not that heavy. All right, all right, all right, here it comes. Because you, 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 you're going to be offended. But when my father died, it was heavy. But for a minute, I almost made it heavier than it was. Because I had a right to be burdened. So I was going to maximize my right when in reality, the desire was attention. I'm sorry. I'm talking about me. Yes, I cried. Yes, I wept. But there were times I didn't feel that heavy, but people were around. So I became heavy for them. But when I got to the funeral and led my family in, stood by his casket and oversaw everybody saying their goodbyes. And in my mind, I was really standing there saying, why are they saying goodbye to him? 
That's a shell. That ain't him. He been gone. But I was standing there and came time to close the bear. I closed the bear. Because I know that I wasn't saying bye to my daddy. Then I got up and preached. And they say, how did you do that? I stopped making the cross that heavy. Because the strength to carry it does not come from me. I'm anointed to carry this. Tell your neighbor, and, and I'm done. Everything you're facing, you're anointed to carry it. That's it. Everything happening in your life. Make you want to drive 80 miles an hour into a tree. Don't like you ain't thought about it. Drive right off a cliff. You're not suicidal, but you think about death. You ain't going to kill yourself, but you tell God, I don't mind if you don't wake me up tomorrow. We said it. He said, tell them, I make it light. For them. That's the Holy Ghost. He said, I anoint you with supernatural strength. You still gonna grieve. You still gonna miss him. You still gonna wonder how God gonna give you the next job. You still gonna go through it. But you ain't got to go through it that heavy. Stop feeling guilty by dancing in grief. It is your privilege. It is your privilege. We do not grieve as them that have no hope. No form of grief. Death is not the only type of grief several types of grief and I'm preaching to me now stop making it so heavy don't do it live on it's easy for you to say that because you ain't going through baby I've been there ain't much you going through that ain't nobody else going through but we have this hope in Christ tell your neighbor you're going to be all right in fact, get up and go find five people and tell them, tell them everything is going to be all right. Go, go tell them. Go tell them everything. Tell them you're going to make it through this. Tell them you're going to survive. Tell them you're coming out on top. Tell them God's got a blessing for you. make it tell them they can smile through the tears Tell them if you need me, just call me. But you're going to make it. I'm going. We're all hurting somewhere. But there was born in us another mind. There's another mind that I got a da 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 That I got a da 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 There's another mind in me. 
and I got to pull down every image of a nation, every imagination that exalts itself against that mind. I'm going to start pulling that junk down. Yeah, this happened, but that ain't. I'm not about to create trouble out of a trouble. No, 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 no. I got to pull that down. Y'all, come on, let's get out of church. But you got to pull that down. God ain't going to pull that down. You got to pull that down. You got to tell yourself, nope, not going to think like that. Nope, devil, you a liar. I'm not going to think like that. You trying to talk in my left ear, but you a liar. Because what I'm getting ready to do is put a word in my right ear. For I shall live and not die and declare the glory of the Lord. Let me put a word in my right ear. Let me put a song in my right ear. Let me put a prayer in my mouth. Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, whither shall I go? Here we are. Few of your children bowing humbly before you. We need you. We need you right now. Because our mind has playing tricks on us. Our mind is trying to lock us down. But we declare our freedom. For it is for freedom's sake that you have set us free. We declare in our mind that we'll think on whatsoever things are lovely. We'll think on whatsoever things are pure. We'll think on whatsoever things are of a good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, we're going to think. I'll preach next time. Let this mind. And the Bible says, put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. It means put on his mind. It's time for us to start thinking like him. We went through a whole phase in the body of Christ. We wore the bracelets and everything. WWJD. D. What would Jesus do? It was designed to teach us to put on the Lord's mind. But we made it a fashion statement. And not a life principle. I want you to leave here today. And when you encounter whatever comes. I want you to say Lord give me your mind. Because I know what's on my mind. And I know that ain't right. It just going to feel good. Give me your mind. 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 That is when you can love who you know can't stand you. Because you got his mind. That's when you can do good to them. That do all manner of evil. Not because you shouted Sunday. But because you put on his mind. I admit and I'm praying I admit the mind of God makes you feel like sucker is written across your forehead because it feels like everybody gets to handle you any kind of way and you still got to do right and it's not fair pastor but the Bible is not fair God is not fair there is no fairness principle in the word of God. He's a just God. So he's dealing with me to be like him, not be like you. So just because you cuss at me don't mean I got to cuss back at you. Because I don't have your mind. That brings me too low. Tell your neighbor, I'm too high to act like that. 
I lived on too high of a level. I'm a royal priesthood. I'm of a holy nation. I'm of a peculiar people. I'm graced to show forth, to manifest who he is and what he does in the realm called greater. Greater work shall ye do. So I need his mind. Every head is bowed. I'm watching your purses. Every head is bowed. Lord, I need more of your mind. Some of us are struggling because God is graduating his mind in you. And it's requiring more of you than was required. And I thought I was doing pretty good. And God says, you were for the level I had you on, but I'm calling you higher. So you got to conform to me and be transformed, even from the level you were on. If that's you, come to this altar. Don't come to me. Come to Jesus. He's calling me to a greater mind of his. And my coming forth is simply a yes. It's simply a yes, Lord. I'll go through the pain. I'll go through the frustration. I'll go through the unfairness. I'll go through whatever is required for me to get more of your mind. 